how did this film find the two of you? In a very classical way, uh, through my agent, casting director, uh, they contacted my agent. I got the script, I read it, I met Robin at a cafe, we talked, and then we started to audition for the film. And that's where, when I met uh, Arnaud. Was that the question? Yeah, that yeah, was the question. Yeah. Was <laughs> Very good answer. Yes, I'm sorry, maybe it was a bit like, because there's nothing extraordinary. So I prefer that we talk maybe further about other things, because it was very classical. Oh, sure. Like sure. agent, script, then you read it, then you meet the, the director. Nothing really like, nothing I wish I could say like, well, I found Robin all drunk in the streets. And then he was like, ah, well, no. It nothing like, like that. that. Nothing okay. like that, unfortunately. Or no, I believe you have a different yeah, story. Yeah, different you way. Yeah, masseuse? yeah, a special one. Um, yeah, I was a masseuse uh, when I get the call uh, from the casting director. I used to work with like ten years ago, and she said to me over the phone, uh, "Are you still an actor?" I said, "Nope." Uh, do you want to try an audition for me? Do you want to have an audition for me? I said, "No, not at all. I'm not an actor. So why?" And she said, OK, listen, the script is really interesting. It's about AIDS in the 19s in Paris, gay community, um, the political aspect and everything. And I said, for a movie like that, why not give a try? Yeah. And get maybe eventually get back to the business. So many questions with that one. Um, you had been auditioning. You were, you were in Paris before. You were auditioning, and then you decided to move and become a masseuse? I was an actor doing films in Paris for about five or six years. And um, it didn't went exactly the way I was expecting, um, waiting for calls, having parts, but very small one, uh, getting audition. But at the very end, no, it's not you. You're the second, you're the third. And before being really angry or depressed or, or anything like that, say, OK, you're 25, 26, you can do something out of your life. You can realize yourself in another way. Let's find out what, but let's do it. So I did several jobs in Paris. And then I went to Thailand, uh, Thailand and uh, to Bangkok first. And uh, I learned Thai massage there at the beginning just not to have fun, but to have an experience. And it became serious and I liked it. And uh, after two months of uh, training sessions, uh, I went back to Paris with my diploma. And uh, one month after, I got the call from the casting director. That's fascinating. That's great. When you decide to do something else, you know, the past comes and just grabs you. You have to like, I think sometimes when you want too much something, you're not attractive. Uh, you so you have to see around what can, in, what can fill you with something else. Yeah. Right, and have a different energy around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and open to other things. Because when you're an actor, sometimes it's quite easy to stay or to get focus on yourself and that's it and it's really important to see other things maybe other countries other people culture um, just to be aware that it's not all about movies or theater or that kind of stuff there is life and um, you can experience something else as well it's not um, maybe uh, the only thing you can do and that kind of thing, I guess. But it's my own experience. I, um, I'm not like giving lessons. It's just telling my story. Sure, sure. Oh, that's. I, and I think we we hear from many actors and filmmakers and writers that they gave up and then they came back to it and they needed that break. Did you ever feel you needed a break, Noel? From any? I feel that I have breaks all the time. <laughs> Between movies. Yeah, when I'm not working, I just forget that I'm an actor. Like right now, I, I'm not, I can't say the same because we are doing the promotion of the, of the film and we keep talking about the film. So at a certain point, it becomes like, okay, your, your life or, you, or your new profession is just talking about the films that you did, which is like a consequence of films, right? Because the films that I did last year worked and did well. Well, now you find yourself talking about the work that you already did. But before, maybe, if I was playing in some films that didn't have that much of promotion, I would just feel that it was like emptiness and just like you're... I was coming back to my real life and I was not, you know, expecting to, 
to be cast in a new film right away. So I would just like travel or do studies, you know, just study Chinese or <laughs> do parachuting or whatever. I mean, just life. I was not in that, uh, maybe in that same like, you know, over excitement of just like keep up, keep up and just continue to do a film after a film. Um, and I'm not really good at choosing projects. I mean, not, I'm good at choosing projects in the sense that I just, I'm very honest and I just try to do only things that I like. And I think that that's the only way that you can do good work, you know? Like, I'm not very professional in the sense that I can make whatever strategy, character yeah. or strategy. Yeah. I'm just so bad at networking. Uh, so in that way, I'm very naive, I think. And I'm very like a, like a kid, you know? I just do it because it's fun. And then when I'm not doing it, well, life is out there. Life is here. There's something else af after the career, you know? You don't have a five-year plan? Beyond the career. I don't have a what? Five-year plan. <laughs> <laughs> but that's very American. <laughs> okay, that's right, an American right, question. Right. Yeah, like all the questions re career related that that we get in the states are just like for me, it's just, it's just funny. I just laugh because I have no consciousness at all of what I'm going to be doing within ten years or just or next year. I can tell you, I'm, I don't know where I'm going to be living in in January. Wow, I, but do you like that freedom? Because it sure. sounds like that lends itself to what you do when the camera's on. Of course I do. Yeah, sure. It's like a, like a fight with what people think that your life should be. You know, answering those questions are always like, oh, tiring because you have to say, well, I'm not like that. And then you feel that you should be like that because all, you know, the, the, everything that surrounds you is very conservative in a way. It's like, where are you based? Where are you? Da, da, da. What are your projects? What is your community? Well, you know, who do you identify with? Who are your references? Who are your models? It's just like everything is so career driven as if we were just the only, uh, the only producers of that future. And if you ask me like who I would like to work with, well, I'm sure that I don't know those guys or girls. And I yep. think it's much, much more like inspiring to me just thinking that the greatest people I could work with, I haven't really heard of. It's very calming, that idea, you know, just like stop just thinking that the, that the best is out there. You know it exists, but you don't have the means to attain it. It's like frustration comes right away and nothing good from you can, can be, you know, produced. From when you're in that stress. When you're in that right. stress mm -hmm. of just like right. trying to chase after, you know, success yeah. or the right people or the best people that you should be working with in order to be a consolidated actor in the movie bit. Oh. To me, it's just like so stifling. I can't be, I can't breathe. I no. can't be what I am. I can't be, you know, relaxed towards like, a, like this kind of experience that we just try to get when we play. I think that we're not machines, or at least I try to think that acting is not being a machine. It's just trying to find yourself in certain circumstances in which you can be creative that those circumstances don't really depend on your will. You see what I mean? I do, and I'm wondering how you take the approach when you do meet a director, knowing that you'd like to just be free with it and, and not place too many expectations. Mm. But that's so, how we did this film. Okay. We so had no idea of the, 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 the reach out that the film could have after. So w can you tell me one of the scenes, and I know it's difficult without giving away too much in the film, but that you were most proud of to be a part of? Because, you know, the two of you were um, pr probably not around for most of when ACT UP was, mm -hmm. or maybe just... Yeah, too young. You yeah. were too young, yeah. you were, you know... Yeah, very young. Very, very young. So, but, but to know that you were part of sort of reenacting this history, that any scenes that you were proud of? The and whole movie, maybe. The whole movie? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. the scene, it's difficult, no? I can I can talk about scenes that were very hard to to make. Yeah, but and mm. that we really I don't know if we enjoyed them, but the result is very. So I mean, we're proud we're of quite it. proud of yeah. the result, yeah. but then in in terms of pride or political pride or just like that kind of pride that you're trying to talk about, mm. I can say that it was fun doing the actions. Yeah. You know, just everything was very very viva vivacious, very vital in the film. Uh, I don't know if I can just talk about one scene. It's always great, you know, to be in those situations in which, you, in which you can just like shout your soul out and you can just do all those things that you don't really do in life. To be part of, yes, Cathartic, this, you know. this adventure I'm very proud of, but a scene that will be 
a bit difficult to say exactly, yeah. Okay. So when you do meet with a director, let's suppose you, you know you have a meeting, um, is there anything you do to prepare beforehand or no, that almost ruins it because then it's too planned, it's not spontaneous? Um, usually you have um, a script to, um, to learn before, so um, learn your lines, to learn my lines. I would like think maybe some catchphrases, but not that, that much. And to be rested and focus on the meeting, yeah, over the conversation and try to be present. in the moment present, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I don't have any technique. I think that a, an encounter is an encounter between two worlds and you can't fake it, you know what I mean? You can maybe read, of course, the script, or I was thinking when you were asking the question, when I worked with the Worcester Group, I remember that I read a book about the Worcester Group before meeting my mentor, whatever, it was a grant, so I had to meet the, the, this person with whom I was supposed to work afterwards. It was just to know who they were and who their work was so if I can meet a director and I can maybe watch his films, yeah, sure, I will do it. So we can have a conversation that is not only about that project, but a conversation that can also relate the, the project that we're talking about with the work of that director. Yeah, it's very like instinctive, kind of like just trying to know the work of the, of the, person, you, of the person you're going to meet. But no more than that, I think. With Robin, did he require a lot of takes? Yeah. You know, there's certain directors that they really command a lot of takes and, it, and how was that? It depended on the scene. Yes. Some of the scenes were very like, you know, emotional and hard to repeat a lot so, of times. Yeah. But usually was quite a lot, yeah. And, and the debates were just the debates endless. and doing from the beginning till mm -hmm. the end and again and again and again. Not like, you know, just pick up um, like the beginning of the scene and then no. Everything and everything and everything again and again. Yeah, and again without and again. blocking, without marks on yeah. the floor. It was very free, the shooting, I can say. Um, and the good thing is that we would shoot right after arriving on the set. So we were all like. Yeah, 20 that, minutes. Yeah, 20 minutes. In that minutes weird over. state of not knowing how things were going to evolve. Yeah. So we were just lost you know, on the set. And that was great because I think that he really used that when he was editing the film, you know, just to take some parts of the first takes in which we were like more fragile and then maybe, you know, one take towards the end of the, of the day in which we were more like grounded in the scene. So I think that that was also a great tool that Ruban played with in order to build that kind of naturality or that kind of documentary style, what people love saying about the film, even if it's just word by word. Uh, how was it to see yourselves after the film? Because some actors will refuse to watch themselves, and that's just part of their process. Mm -hmm. And then others are fine. They can almost see it as a third person. It's not them. Mm. It's difficult. Okay. It's difficult. It needs time like, to really enjoy the, the, the movie. It's difficult for me for the, the first time to see all the things that were going wrong, or I think are going wrong. Um, it's difficult to hear your voice, that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah, for most yeah. humans. Yeah. The meat <laughs> helps me because I'm playing in French. Yeah. So there's like, there's like that weird distance because I don't speak French in life. So it's just like, that helps me a lot. It puts me in a different state, you know, like less prejudicious towards my, how I sound. Could uh, you speak French in life? But it's just like some moments in my life. My life is not in French. Okay. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah, like yeah. my French personality yeah, is just You don't like, think in French. It's yeah. like a creation, that personality. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not that, that kind of like very primary physical uh, link towards your, your voice yeah. or how you sound. Okay. That thing that, w like when you hear yourself on the phone. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I don't understand what I'm saying in French. <laughs> It's true. I have to think about the script, about the lines, just because the phonetics sometimes they go, they get very close. You know the sounds, it, all the contractions. And maybe I don't really get the sense. To me, it's just like singing at certain points. You know when I play. So okay, all that just to say that there's a distance, a natural distance between what I am and what I do when I play in a different language. Um, 
And then, you know, when you play in a great film, it's much easier to see yourself because it's very possible, plausible that your work is going to be good because the ensemble is very good. And then when you play in less good films, I'm sure that your presence in that context is going to be much rawer. You know, it's going <laughs> to be raw much, because yeah. you're going to be exposed to not in a good way. And then it's like a learning process just to learn how, how to see yourself and also how to take your flaws, what you consider a flaw, as a quality of the character. We don't have the control over what we do all the time. And I think that's also the greatness of a director, just to see your, your physical reactions, things that you can control and take them as part of the character. And maybe the things that you like the least in your personality or in the way you behave on the set, maybe, maybe are going to be qualities for the character. We have to be humble in that sense, you know. We can control and make perfect ha characters. Maybe what we don't like is what suits the best for the character. Um, but I don't like watching myself. No? <laughs> Just to, to, to <laughs> make this story short, I don't really enjoy, no. Forgive me if this is too much of, of a planned question, of, of, but I'm just curious what you want people to take away from the film. I have no plan. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that because we didn't do the film for, like, I don't, I, I don't think that the film has a, a clear message. No. You're going to see your film, no. I'm going to see my it's, film. You, you can see what you want to see, which is really good, I think. There's no, please watch this, please be aware of this, come on take me by your hand and I'll go show you this. It's just like in front of you and you take it the way you can, how you can. So it's very personal. Yeah, and mostly this film because it's, yeah. it's a very multi-layered yeah. film in which you can identify with a character, with yeah. the tension, with And with sometimes maybe you're Nathan, maybe sometimes you're Thibault, maybe you're Sean and another one. So it's very open. Yeah, and politically speaking, I think that it's also very personal journey that you do in the film. Some people can be ignited by the film, politically speaking, and some others can be just like in love with the characters and with their energies. Or, But I think that if you're touched by the film in a very intimate way and not just shocked or, you know, when there's like a, like a, when the film pierces you in a very, in a more profound way, I think that that's political too and that can create changes in, in, the, in, in people's perceptions. Uh, but I like answer. I like questions, not answers. So films. I think I like films that just make me think, yeah. and not give me solutions. You know.